Poppy K and her weekly vlogs Shopping, reading and her cute dog Poppy K and her weekly vlogs Poppy K, subscribe, like, comment and share Cheers! We are on vacation We are in Massam in North Yorkshire We are staying in the telephone exchange The old telephone exchange So I'm going to give you a tour of my crib Well, hello and welcome back to my vlog. We are on vacation, on holiday, whatever you want to call it. Much needed after Christmas. We're in Yorkshire and because we're in Yorkshire, I decided to bring with me Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell by Susanna Clarke. We're actually going to go and visit a few of the places that are mentioned in this book and also some of the places that they used in the BBC series. So... Yeah, I'm 214 pages in. I've been reading a little bit today. Basically, we're following Mr. Norell at the moment, so we're still on the first part of the book. Mr. Norell has been called in. He's a magician, a, uh, what's the word? Legitimate um, magician, whereas all the others are just sort of seem to be like magicians that you'd get at parties and pull out rabbits of hats and things like that you know out of hats and things so we're following him and he has helped the government with the napoleonic war because this is when it's set so we're in the napoleonic war and he has basically done a few magic um, or, or created some magic to defeat the French in certain aspects of the Napoleonic War. He's also been tasked with proving himself as a magician and bringing somebody back to life. So we've just got to that point at the moment. It's all accumulating into something else. We're going to meet Jonathan Strange very soon. And I think when their two worlds collide, that's when we're going to get fireworks. So as I say, I'm 200 odd pages in. Susanna Clark's writing is very much, I would say, it's reminiscent of, I'd say, Charles Dickens or something like that. It's got that feel about it, although it's not like Charles Dickens, if you get my drift. That didn't make sense at all, did it? It is like Charles Dickens but better is basically what I'm saying. The descriptions and the way that she's sort of going around telling the story is really good. It's full. If you want something that's quick and fast paced, this 
I don't think this is for you. But if you like something that's atmospheric and sort of gets there slowly but surely, then this is definitely for you. As I say, I'm 215 pages in. I've got a few more pages until I get to the second part. Hopefully get that done today. Volume 2 is Jonathan Strange. I don't know if there must be other volumes in here. But yeah, so we're going to be doing that. So that's just a little bit of an update. So here we are at Featherstone's and it has been here since 1827. Now, the family kept it as a small brewery until the 1970s and then it came out and was a lot more, a bigger company. But then in the 1980s, the late 1980s, there was a deal to be struck and Thiexton's were gonna sell off part of their brewery or all of their brewery to some big conglomerates. One of the brothers of the family did not enjoy that and did not think that that was a good idea. So in 1988, Paul Thiexton broke away from the Thiexton family brewery, which is this one here, and he ended up opening his own up just across the road, over that way, called the Black Sheep Brewery. And that is where I'm going to take you next. He opened that up in 1992. which beer is the best I went out and bought some so we have black sheep and we have old peculiar by Theakstons we're gonna give them a test Oh, peculiar <laughs> and black sheep. Okay. Mhm. Mm what are you gonna go for first? Oh, try the um, black sheep. Black sheep. Black sheep. Thing is, it's not really a fair test because one's a blonde and one's dark. Yeah, and one's like a bitter. One's a proper stout. It's more of a pale ale, isn't it? Mm. And then this is Old Peculiar Thiexton's. Oh, I'm sorry, but it, for me it's Thiexton's. Sweet. That's sweeter than that, and I like that. Mm, yeah, it's more of a, like a toffee taste. Mm. It's true though, it's like a darker caramel, almost burnt sugar. So, this is like burnt sugar and caramel, and this is like a... a bit fruitier. This is a hot summer day. Mmm. 
This is sitting next to a bonfire, toasting marshmallows. Yeah, winter, autumn. This would be lovely in a steak pie. Mm. I had a hard day at work. Get in the home. back garden, yeah. Just smash it down, first pint down into Do I think Paul Feakston made a good choice? I mean, that is the only black sheep beer that I b b b can't spit. No, is it only, yeah, that is the only black sheep beer that I bought. But I, Old Peculiar is my all-time favourite beer anyway. So that's the story in Balamori. Well, hello. I'm in York. Well, I'm not actually, I'm in Thirsk. I'm at the station. I'm going to York because I'm going to go and have a look around at some of the places that are, appear in my book. So I want you to come with me. I'm here in York, as you can see. This is Minster, York Minster, and it features in Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. I'm gonna go in, well, I'm gonna see how much it costs first. I'm gonna go in and uh, have a look round, hopefully. So, um, yeah, but I've really enjoyed being here in York at the minute. The weather's a little bit inclement, but I just thought I'd take this opportunity to sit here and just say hello. I'm nearly finished, actually. I'm just listening to the book while I'm out and about as well, but uh, I've really enjoyed this book. It's a very, very slow burner. And as I said earlier on in the vlog, it, if you like something fast paced and blah, blah, this isn't for you. It's got lots of footnotes, which means that you can kind of, you get more information which is really really good and the the footnotes just aid you with get going through the story as well and actually they're quite 
educational because I've learned a few things from the footnotes. It's really good to sort of read that. Some people have found that tedious, but I actually thought it was quite quite good, especially when you're listening to the audiobook as well, because I mean that is a chunky monkey of a book to read. So I'm gonna go now and see if I can get into York Minster and hopefully I can. So I'll see you soon. the city walls of York. I went round the uh, Minster, very nice, and I tell you what, if you're ever in York, go to the Minster, because at first you think, 16 quid to get in, but I just gotta be careful because there's like a sheer drop on that side. <laughs> Probably not the best time to talk to camera. Um, yeah, but the thing is, the ticket is valid for 12 months. So if you want to come back, it's well worth it. So I might see if my husband wants to come on Friday, he can get on the train and go and have a look around York himself. So yeah, I've had a nice day. We're on the wall. And now I'm gonna go and probably film some trains.
Hello, that's me back off of our holiday. Had a wonderful time, as you can see. Finished Jonathan Strange. I obviously didn't take this copy because this copy is mammoth, but finished this book. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's very spooky, very, very spooky in the fact that we're talking about magic. As I said earlier on, we're following Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. The first part is of Mr. Norell. The second part sort of comprises Jonathan Strange's life as well. And then the two meet. And as I said, and as I sort of predicted, fireworks happen. Basically, Mr. Norell here thinks that there's only room for one magician in town. Jonathan Strange doesn't think that that's true. He wants to spread the love, all of that sort of thing. So that's basically what the story is about, is these two magicians having it out. Just a really good read, especially if you're going to Yorkshire or something like that, because the atmosphere and things like that, it just, I think it helped as well. Listening to it on audio as well, I listened to it as well. So I had a little bit of reading and listening to audio. And when I was walking around York, I was listening to it on the audio. Absolutely loved listening to that. Definitely a good one. I gave it it four stars a long read as you can see it's not a fast pace sort of book if you like something that's got personality and and a lot of information i'm just trying to find some of the footnotes if i can show you see i mean there's illustrations throughout as well but there's like footnotes so you've got your footnotes there you've got illustrations throughout and that's in the other book as well that i had but some of the footnotes are really quite informative and I have learned a lot of reading this book so four out of five stars top notch I also finished uh, the blade itself but I'm going to talk about that in next week's vlog so I finished that so I am looking for books to read I think what I am going to read next for next week's vlog I've got a couple of um books to read so I'm going to read Vita Nostra by it's Sir, Sergei Dachenko that's who it's by Sergei Dachenko so I'm going to read that Vita Nostra I'm also going to be reading a couple of other books so I'm going to finish up my holiday vlog here because we are now back home as you can see I'm resting the old face from a little bit of makeup I'm unpacking we're doing the washing we're doing the ironing all of that good stuff getting the house back to normal i hope you really really did enjoy that i i had the time of my life <laughs> so i'm gonna go now because i'm literally talking brash so i'll see you later have a great day the world is your library and i'll see you on the next one bye